The COVID-19 pandemic. Everyone is at risk. Some of us even greater. But what if I am tested positive for the coronavirus? It's this lingering fear about the unknown that comes over me. What is the isolation facility like? How would I be attended to? I have asked myself these questions over and over again, and it's time to get the answers. We started with an email requesting permission for us to be granted unrestricted access to document what the quarantine unit looks like and to document all procedures one would need to follow in order to venture into the restricted areas. When we first arrived at the gates of the Georgetown Public Hospital, we were instructed to wash our hands thoroughly. This is the first procedure that everyone must follow. After washing, a thermometer gun is used by staff who are fully dressed in protective gear on anyone who is willing to gain access to the facility. In most adults, an oral or auxiliary temperature above 37.6 degrees Celsius or 99.7 degrees Fahrenheit or an air temperature above 38.1 degrees Celsius or 100.6 degrees Fahrenheit is considered a fever. The first instruction we were given was to rendezvous with our designated guide, Dr. Shimizu Shaw. She was responsible for all the preparations needed for us to enter the restricted isolation unit. Okay, so the first thing you'd want to do is have on the hospital scrub so that when you finish showering, this could be in the decontam area and you don't have to leave with it, as well as rubber frocks so that you can shower in them and they're washed as glove which is your first pair of gloves and this is after she would have sanitized her hands and these are non-sterile gloves so you can touch them as much as you wish shoe covers I mean, you can't get COVID if COVID gets on your hair, but you want the hair covered just because you don't want to mistakenly touch your hair. So for females, sometimes we use two. Let's make sure everything is covered. And this is our level three um, disposable water resistant gum. So if water gets on it, it doesn't soak through, but it's just on the gum. It comes with a built-in apron, which you'll see better on this side. So we just put this on. So I'm securing the velcro at the top, which is the one here. I'm going to tie this one in here, which is not going to be tied with a bow, it's just a simple knot. And then this one ties in the front, where you will have access to open in it. Okay. So when you're taking off, you just pull here, this will be open. Mm -hmm. You hold the front here and you pull, the Velcro will be open and the back. You pull here and that will also be open. And we double glove because when you're taking off, the first thing you take off is your first glove. Okay. And then the this glove actually works as your hand. Mm -hmm. So this is the last glove that you'll take off. Okay. So go ahead. And you notice one goes under the gong and the other one goes over the gong. So these 
these are sterile gloves, but the reason we're using the sterile gloves is because they're longer, so they can go a little way up in comparison to the other ones that are shorter. So your hands will need to be onto the gong so in the movement it doesn't move. This part here is taped like this so you can hold here to hold it out. So when you're taking off the first thing you can take off is this part. You just hold here or that's off first. Notice like there, there's your neck exposed and there's a part of the bottom that's exposed. Yeah. But again, when you're coming out, even if you have COVID on your neck, you'll not be touching it and touching your face. And when you come out, after you take everything off, you will be in the decondom area where you take a full shower. So you'll wash away anything that's there. So that's it, all set. Now that we're fully draped out in protective gear, it was time for us to make our way to the COVID-19 unit. venture to the second floor of the building. This area is known as the COVID-19 Intensive Care Unit. At that time, it housed one patient, a 79-year-old woman who was desperately fighting for her life. On our way to the third floor, we met with Dr. Amar Deep. He is the medical officer attached to the COVID-19 unit.
quickly recovery. However, if there is a high percentage of COVID patients, they also use up here to monitor the patients 24 seven, which is what you would have seen happening on the second floor. Yes. Monitors, we patient attached monitor. to the monitor. Mm -hmm. So most of the cases when patient becomes so severe, so we had to intubate them. Mm -hmm. So we for intubation, like we have set up on second floor also and the third floor also. So we can use any floor of front door convenient. Like we have more patient who have need to be intubated, so we use both floor and both floor have nurses and doctors all the time, okay. 24 hours. Okay. Well, doc, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Hi, guys. So we've covered the two floors. There's only one patient in there. Um, we're about to exit and remove all this protective gear. So we just go on these stairs. After visiting both units, we headed downstairs to an area where all the protective gear that we had had to be properly discarded in a uniform manner. Which is now where we're going to um, strip where you have to do your compulsory um, detam shower and then we exit through the door on the other side and we're out of the unit. There's only one person at the place? As instructed by Dr. Shaw, we removed our shoe covers first, then the first pair of gloves. This would generally be the protective gear that would essentially make the most contact with infected surfaces. We then place them into their respective containers. and then I exit the COVID-19 unit. After all of our protective gear was removed, we headed to the shower room where there are three different showers. One must take a bath in each before getting dressed and leaving the facility. Okay guys, so we're now out of the COVID unit. This is, behind me is the bathroom area where you have three different showers that you have to take to make sure you're completely clean to come out. So now, as you see, we stripped the product gear and we're now going to head back over to the main office where we're going to collect our personal effects. We now head back to where we started to ask Dr. Shaw some frequently asked questions that people constantly worry about. Hi, my name is Dr. Shazima Shaw, attached to the Internal Medicine and Infectious Disease Department of GBHC. Well, good afternoon, Ms. Shaw. Um, we're here from NVA and we're just going to be asking you a few questions that the general public would have um, in terms of the COVID-19. No problem. Okay. So we've heard that direct sunlight kills the virus. Is that true? And how long does the virus need to be exposed to the sunlight? So that's like a frequent myth. Most people think that direct sunlight might kill the virus or it might have an effect on the virus, but it's just a myth. Um, it's not factual. There's nothing to actually prove that if you stand in the sunlight, it will kill the virus. So it's just a myth. What is the requirements of testing? So currently, um, for a patient to be tested, if you come to our triage area on East Street and mm -hmm. you are evaluated and you have cough, fever, shortness, but anything that might be suspicious for COVID-19, you are um, put on the list to swab and you return the following day where our team would swab you. Um, so the requirement is just the person having symptoms or if you've been exposed to someone that was COVID positive, 
Um, we can also swab you as well. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, how do you acquire the kits for testing? So we don't actually get the entire kit per se, but what we do get is the swab. So we get the swab and the medium for the swab, and then we would go ahead and swab the patient. Send that sample over to the lab, and the lab would use their probes and primers, etc., and they would run the test there. All right. Um, and the lab, I, when I say the lab, I'm referring to the National Reference Lab. Okay, thank you. Um, what is the difference between quarantine and isolation and the conditions attached to both? So for quarantine, when you talk of quarantine, it's someone that is not sick, but they might have been in contact with someone that is COVID positive. So for example, someone in my household gets tested positive for COVID-19. I'm not sick, but I will be placed on quarantine. Meaning, for 14 days I stay home, not having contact with others. Um, isolation is for the people that are sick. So, I might have signs and symptoms, or I do have COVID-19. You're isolated at one of our institutions. So, for example, Diamond or here at GPC. Okay. So, basically, I sorry, to summarize, mm -hmm. one isn't sick, but they've just been in contact. That's quarantine and isolation. They're sick or they're positive for COVID-19. Are there any over-counter drugs that you can purchase to help quell the symptoms if you have contracted the virus and you're quarantined at home? Um, so there are no specific drugs that would help to decrease your viral load or help to make you convert faster to being negative. What we advise people, they can use their vitamin C tablets if they wish as well as your balanced diet. But no drugs that you should be buying over the counter that can assist with this process. You mentioned diet. Is there any special diet you have to adhere to while you're recovering from the virus? So no specific diet, but you'd want to advise people to have a balanced diet. Um, so ensuring that you have your fruits and vegetables in there. And of course, if you use your fruits, then you should not be using vitamin C added to that. That would be sufficient. And in Ghana, you have a wide array of fresh fruits and vegetables. All right, last question. How long after recovering from the virus is it completely safe for you to make contact with the public and can you recontract the virus? So if someone is positive, the only way we would consider this person recovered is if they have two negative swabs. And after having two negative swabs, then you can be reintegrated into society. You can go home and that's fine, you're safe because you have two negative swabs. Um, if you can recontract the virus, so there are a few studies that say um, there were recontracting of the virus. However, there is a period of immunity, meaning a period where you cannot contract the virus again. The duration of this period varies, as studies would not really relate if it's a month, two months, or three months, but there is some amount of immunity. What we advise is if you had the virus and you have recovered, to take all your precautions. So sanitize your hands, um, social distancing, wear your face mask, obey the curfew while it's still in place that sort of thing. I thank you Dr. Shaw so much for your time. You're welcome. With our questions answered and a keen sense on what takes place behind the scenes, we are better equipped to take care of ourselves and each other. It is now our duty to spread the word. So take care, stay safe, and remember, social distancing is our best defense to flatten the curve.